Okay, in this mock quiz, I'd like to go over uh, all the answers. So um, we're going to focus on that. I'm going to explain why they are what they are. So this will be our key. Okay, name each of the three angles in the diagram to the right. So you have to name them with three letters. If I'm going to name, let's see, if I name this one right here, that's going to be ABC. So I can name it angle ABC, or I can name it angle CBA. Okay, so let's name another one. Let me get an orange. Well, I name the bottom one here. The bottom one's going to be angle CBD or angle DBC. Okay, then if I name the big guy, so the big one is ABD, either ABD or angle D. B A. So what you're going to notice for each of these, for every single one of them, the vertex is in the middle, and the vertex is that um, angle, is that uh, letter that's in the center of the angle. Okay, so you don't need to name it both ways for each angle, but I gave you both ways in case you had a different version. In case, you know, you, for example, for number one, if I wrote ABC and you wrote CBA, I want you to understand that they're the same angle. They're both correct. Okay, so then I ask you, can you name any of the angles angle B? Why or why not? Okay, so the answer is no, you cannot. Why or why not? Uh, because it will be, so it will be unclear what angle what angle you are speaking about because every single one of those angles that i just named in number one two and three have the same vertex of b so you can't name it just angle b you've got to use three letters if i had a scenario like this and i had only one angle and this was a b c you could name that angle b because look there's no confusion there's only one angle but in this scenario right here there are multiple angles the three different angles so i can't just call it b okay look at the diagram to the right classify the following angles as okay so here's our vocab Obtuse, oops, so obtuse, right, acute, or straight. So angle ABD. So let me get a color. ABD was this, and that's going to be 90 degrees, and that's going to be a right angle. Okay, so that was my right angle right here. Okay, DBC. D. BC is this entire piece, and that entire piece is going to be a straight angle. It's 180 degrees. Okay, so I have a 90 degree, and I have a 180 degree. Okay, angle ABC. So let's see what where that is. ABC. So ABC is going this way, and look, it's also a right angle, and it's 90 degrees. How about DBE? DBE. So DBE, I cannot get an exact measure for. It's right here, but I can see that it's less than 90 and more than zero. So that's going to be acute. All right. Okay, name a pair of complementary angles. So complementary angles, let me just erase my colors here. Complementary angles sum to 90. So I would say that angle ABE and angle EB 
BD are complementary. Okay, how about a pair of supplementary? Well, one example would be, change colors again. So one example could be angle CBA and angle ABD. Okay, they are, are supplementary. Another example could be angle CBE and angle EBD. Okay, what do you think about that? So those are two pairs right there. Okay, let's keep going. If angle EBD measures 30 degrees, okay, so let's figure this out. If this is 30 degrees, find the measure of angle ABE. Okay, so ABE is part of that right triangle. So it has to be, what, 60 degrees. That's going to be 60 degrees. And angle ABD is the entire thing, so that's 90 degrees. Draw a label with capital letters and identify a pair of vertical angles. Okay, so um, I'm going to do something different than what I have in the answer key. Actually, no, I'm not because I don't want to confuse things. So if I do a cross like this, okay, I'm going to make these into lines. And I want to identify a pair of vertical angles. So this is going to be A. B, C, D, and E. Okay, so the angles that are vertical, I'm going to say angle C, B, E, and angle A, B, D are a pair. So that is um, C, B, E, those are the side ones. So that is this one. This and this is what I just did. Okay, let me get out of there and let's do another pair. How about angle A, B, C and angle D, B, E. So which pair are those? Let's highlight that for a second. That's going to be here and here. So that's going to be this angle and this angle right there. Okay, so that was the second pair. So there are two pairs in here. Okay, let me get out of those colors. Okay, how do you know that angles are vertical? They share the same vertex. And they are composed of opposite rays. That's what makes them vertical. All right. And I'm going to say note. Vertical angles are congruent. They measure the same. True or false? Vertical angles always have the same measure. That is definitely true because I just stated that. All right, then in, di in the diagram, BD bisects ABC. Solve for X. Then find the measure of angle CBD and the measure of angle ABC. Okay, so since BD bisects ABC, and they told us that angle ABD is 46. They told us that right here. Then that means that angle DBC has to also equal 46. Okay, so for that to be, what do I know X has to be? Well, for X to equal, for, for 46 to equal 50 minus X, what can I do? I can subtract, oops, sorry, subtract 50 from each side. Let me go back up. Subtract 50 from each side. So I'm going to write this out over here, I guess. So 40, 50, 
minus x equals 46. Subtract 50, subtract 50, and I'm getting negative x equals negative 4. Divide by negative 1, divide by negative 1, and x equals 4. Okay, that's the value of 4. Okay, angle CBD has to be 46 degrees because the top angle is 46 degrees. So if they're both 46, then the measure of angle ABC has to be 46 degrees plus 46 degrees, which is 1292 degrees. So a little bit bigger than a right angle. What does the word bisect mean? Well, that's the key to the whole problem. Bisect means divide in two equal angles, right? Okay, then we have complements and supplements. So we've done this so many times. So you need to know that complements are 90 degrees, supplements are 180. If uh, measure of angle 1 is 20, find the complement. Well, it's going to be 70 because 90 minus 20 will give me 70. If angle 1 and 2 are instead supplements, then I'm going to say 180 minus 20 equals 160. So the measure of angle 2 in this case is going to be 160, and they're both degrees. So I put degree symbols on both of those. Okay, 21. What does 21 tell us about? It says, look at the figure to the left. If a FDI, so that's this angle right here, FDI, if that measures 88 degrees, look what I'm going to do. I'm going to put 88 degrees right there. What is the measure of FDJ? FDJ is over here. FDJ. Okay. What do I know about those two angles? They are on a straight line. So I would take 180 degrees and subtract away 88 degrees. And what am I going to get? That's going to become a 7. That will become a 10. This is 2. That's going to become a 17. And that's going to be 92 degrees. So that measure, the measure of FDJ, FDJ has to be 92 degrees. Okay, so this is 92 degrees. Using the information... From question 21, state the measure of angle JDH. So JDH is right here. Okay, right there. And that is across from this angle right here, which is its vertical angle. So that has to be 88 degrees because they have to be the same. Okay, IDH, IDH is across from... 92 degrees. Therefore, it has to be 92 degrees. And the reason for it is because they are vertical angles. Look at the figure and list a pair of vertical angles. Well, we just, we just talked about that. So angle um, F D I is vertical to angle J D H. And angle F D J is vertical to angle H D I. All right, so we got we have two pairs of vertical angles. Now list a pair of linear angles. Okay, so let me erase what I have here. Okay, linear angles are on the same line. Here's a line, if I call this angle 1 and angle 2, that's a linear pair. So I'll do them by their letters. Angle JDF and angle FDI. That's a pair of linear angles. But there are lots of them. Okay, here's another pair over here. Let me just do a little different color. What about these? So that would have been 
angle JDH and angle IDH. They're vertical. Oh, they're, excuse me, they're linear. And there are other pairs out there as well, but that's two pairs right there. Okay, now I'm saying use your protractor, but I didn't give them out. So I'm not sure if you haven't have a protractor. So what we're going to do is this. We're going to say, okay, an angle that measures 60 degrees. What would that look like? Well, let me see if I can get a straight line here. There we go. Let me put a little arrow on it. Now, 90 would have been right here, right? If I went straight up. So what if I go something like that? Does that seem reasonable that this could be 60 degrees? And I think you would say yes. All right, now, what about this one? An angle that measures 140 degrees. All right, so without a protractor, I know that this angle is going to be a straight line. So, 140 degrees. If I put a perpendicular line right here, perpendicular means right angle, that would have been 90. So I need to go a little bit bigger than 90. So what if I went over here? Okay. And so this is how I'm going to do this. I'm going to erase these little dotted lines. I'm going to leave the two angles up, but I'm going to say that this angle right here is 140 degrees. Okay. And then you don't really need to have this any longer. It just was kind of like my guide. So I'm going to put this back and that looks about 140 degrees. So see if you can eyeball it and get a sense of this without using a protractor. I'm going to keep going. Okay, an angle that measures 90 degrees. Well, that's pretty easy, right? That's just going to be straight up and down. So here's the bottom of my angle. Here's a ray. Here's the vertical section of my angle. And I'm going to put a box right here because I remember that the box indicates that I have a right angle. That's a 90 degree angle. 180, remember that's a full line. So give yourself a nice line. Give yourself a center point right there and then do this and tell yourself that that's 180 degrees. Then you have a good visual. All right, we're gonna keep going. All right, if you want to have a pair of vertical angles, I need you to indicate which ones they are. So um, X marks, marks the spot is the best way to get started with vertical angles. So that's one. And then here's another line. Okay. So I'm going to say that this top angle and this bottom angle are vertical and therefore they are congruent. So that's a pair of vertical angles. You have another pair on the opposite side, but for right now, they just wanted a pair, so that's a pair. All right, now, a pair of complementary angles. So what I would do for that is I would draw myself a right angle. Okay, so here's that, and then have this go straight up and down. And we know that this is a right angle. So what if you have another ray in here? Doesn't that make angle one and angle two complementary? Because angle one and angle two has to add up to 90 because of that box. Okay, let's move on to supplementary angles. So here we come. First off, supplementary, you have to think straight. I'm going to draw a straight line. Here's my straight line. Here's the vertex in the middle somewhere. And then why don't I just draw in an extra ray? That means that angle one 
and angle 2 are supplementary because they add up to 180. Okay, 32 says, go ahead and draw an angle that has been bisected. So that means that you're dividing it in two equal parts. So I'm just going to pick another color and let's just draw an angle. Okay, here's an angle. Okay, so then draw an angle bisector and have them look pretty equal. Then put some markings on there. So let me mark it in blue. This equals this. And that's how you mark it. So I'm going to say that this is angle 3 and angle 4. And they are equal. So angle 4 is completely equal to angle 3. Okay, so that's an angle that has been bisected. So this bigger angle out here that I'm making orange right now, that's the angle that was bisected. And when it was bisected or cut in half, it turned into two equal angles, angle 3 and angle 4. And those, that little semicircle, little half circle, little sliver of the moon, because they're both marked in the same way, that tells me that those two angles are equal. And then I use good notation down here. Okay, so that's it. So you had these right here as your answers, but now I've walked through all of this. And we're going to have a quiz on this, which is 1415, next class. So if you know this material that's covered in this mock quiz, you will be all set. Okay? And that ends this little video.